students so in the last lecture we have studied about the event of fertilization so we have studied about pollen pestle interaction pollen pestle interaction is followed by fertilization so if we'll quickly revise it right then we know that fertilization consists of two events that is syngamy and triple fusion the first event which occurs is syngamy syngamy is the fusion of the male gamete and the female gamete right and the second event which is followed by syngamy is triple fusion triple fusion is the fusion of one male gamete and two polar nuclei to form a triploid primary endosperm nucleus right so this will result in the formation of zygote which is diploid zygote will result in the formation of embryo this will result in the formation of primary endosperm nucleus which is triploid then which is the next event which occurs right so this is the first event this is the second event the third event will be embryo development from zygote right or endosperm development from primary endosperm nucleus the answer is endosperm development right so the next event is endosperm formation right why is it so why there is endosperm formation previous it precedes the embryo development the answer is very simple right that embryo the developing embryo needs nutrition and that nutrition is provided by endosperm so if the embryo starts developing and if the endosperm is not yet developed who will provide nutrition to the embryo then the embryo might not be able to survive that's why first there is endosperm formation which gets completed and this is followed by the last event that is embryo development clear right so we have seen this two event students right the next event is formation of endosperm right so when we are studying formation of endosperm what is endosperm and from where is endosperm formed right so what is endosperm endosperm is a mass of triploid tissue right endosperm is a mass of triploid tissue right from where is it formed which is formed by repeated mitotic divisions of what primary endosperm cell primary endosperm cell so how is the sequence primary endosperm nucleus is first formed by triple fusion this is followed by cytokinesis or you can say that the central cell itself now functions as primary endosperm cell so there is formation of primary endosperm cell right this cell is a triploid cell right this will undergo mitosis to form endosperm endosperm is a tissue tissue consists of mass of cells and all the cells which will be formed will be triploid cell now what is endosperm this endosperm contains right it is a triploid tissue right it contains reserved food material right it contains reserved food material which is to be provided to the developing embryo to be provided to developing 
embryo. This is clear. So there is formation of endosperm from primary endosperm cell by mitotic division. So endosperm is a mass of triploid tissue which is formed by the mitotic division of the primary endosperm cell. Right? And what does endosperm, what does the cell possess? The cell possesses reserved food material which is to be provided, right? Which the developing embryo is going to consume to for its growth, right? So now I hope you understand why endosperm formation precedes the embryo development. Once endosperm is thoroughly formed, all the reserved food is there in endosperm. Then the embryo will start developing and as and when the embryo grows, it starts consuming the endosperm. Clear? So from that, we can say that endosperm gets consumed by the embryo during the formation of seed. Right? So there are two types of the seed. Right? If endosperm is totally consumed, By developing embryo, then such seed, right? Such seed is called as if endosperm is completely consumed, such seed is called as non endospermic seed, right? Which means the seed does not possess any endosperm, it is completely consumed by the embryo. But if some endosperm is persistent in seed, right? So embryo has consumed endosperm, but still some embryo is persistent in the seed, then such type of seed is called as endospermic seed right so there are two types of seed non-endospermic seed which means the seed does not possess any endosperm part tissue because it is completely consumed by the embryo and the second type of seed is endospermic seed the seed right possesses some amount of persistent endosperm even after the consumption by the embryo such seeds are called as endospermic seed right so if we'll quickly revise it, first event is syngamy, second event is triple fusion. It is always followed by endosperm formation. Endosperm formation precedes embryo development. What is endosperm? It is a mass of triploid tissue which is formed by repeated mitotic divisions of primary endosperm cell. So primary endosperm nucleus is first formed by triple fusion. The central cell is now primary endosperm cell. The antipodal cells, the synergid cells are gradually degenerating. This cell undergoes mitosis to form endosperm. What is there in endosperm tissue, the triploid tissue? Reserved food material is present. If all this reserved food material is consumed by the developing embryo, then the seed which is formed will not have any endosperm. Such seed is called as non-endospermic seed. And if some amount of endosperm is persistent, such seed is called as endospermic seed. When we are seeing this topic, let's see there are different types of endosperms also. Right? So there are mainly three types of endosperm. So there are mainly three types of endosperm. The first one is called as free nuclear endosperm. What is free nuclear endosperm? So what we have studied that primary endosperm cell is present. This cell is a triploid cell with a triploid nucleus, right? So the nucleus is a triploid nucleus. 
Now, this cell will undergo karyokinesis. Only karyokinesis. So, when only karyokinesis occurs, what happens? The inside nucleus keeps on dividing. So, what happens? The cell enlarges and the cell is filled with might be thousands of nuclei, right? So, there will be thousands of nuclei and there is mitotic karyokinesis. So, it means that all the nuclei are triploid nuclei. So, this are thousands of triploid nuclei nuclei right this is so thousands of nuclei are formed all these nuclei are triploid nuclei so a single cell possesses many nuclei such type of endosperm is called as free nuclear endosperm example of free nuclear endosperm is coconut water the coconut water consists of Thousands of nuclei. Those are endospermic nuclei. All are triploid nuclei and it is a nutritive tissue. That is why it is said that coconut of water is rich in nutrition. Right? So that is free endosperm, free nuclear endosperm. The next type of endosperm is cellular endosperm. Right? Example first, let me. Sure, I'll give you an example. Example of it is white kernel of coconut. The white part of coconut. So what happens during the formation of uh, endosperm in coconut? First, there is free, repeated free nuclear mitotic karyokinesis. So thousands of nuclei are formed. Then some of these nuclei undergo cytokinesis to form cellular endosperm and that will form the white part of the coconut, right? So some nuclei shows cytokinesis to form white part, right? So it is made up of cells and hence the endosperm is called as cellular endosperm, right? So first type of endosperm is free nuclear endosperm seen in coconut water. Second type of endosperm is cellular endosperm which is seen in white kernel of coconut, right? And the third type of endosperm is bile endosperm. This helobial endosperm is an intermediate endosperm, right? Example, it is seen in monopause. What is it, right? So, it consists of both the parts, right? That, say for example, this is a primary endosperm nucleus, is a primary endosperm cell. This undergoes mitosis, that is karyokinesis and cytokinesis to form, say, cluster of cells. All the cells will be triploid cells. Now, any one nuclei of the cell, say this cell, is going to undergo only karyokinesis. So, what will happen? There will be only nuclear formation so, this entire structure, this entire structure is a combination of cellular endosperm as well as free nuclear endosperm. It is an intermediate type. Such type of endosperm is called as helobile endosperm. So, there are, these are the three types of endosperm. Free nuclear endosperm seen in coconut water. Cellular endosperm seen in white kernel, white part of coconut and helobile endosperm which is seen in monopods. Right? So what is our next topic students? We have studied syngamy, we have studied triple fusion that is followed by endosperm formation. So obviously now once nutritive endosperm is completely formed, 
the diploid zygote is now going to develop into an embryo by consuming the food from the endosperm. So our next topic is embryo development. Topic is development of embryo. Right, so there is syngamy, triple fusion, endosperm formation, and finally there will be embryo development. Right, student, this is a diagram of a fertilized embryo sac. Embryo sac, we have studied that embryo sac is a seven celled, eight nucleated structure which is present in the ovule. This is a fertilized embryo sac, which means after fertilization, what is the picture of the embryo sac? Right? So we know after fertilization, the female gamete is forming a zygote. So female gamete and male gamete fuses to form a zygote. And this zygote is diploid zygote. The synergid cells are degenerating or might be completely degenerated. Right? There is a primary endosperm nucleus which is a triploid nucleus and there is primary endosperm cell. This entire cell is now primary endosperm cell. And on the chalazal end, there are degenerating antipodal cells. So antipodal cells are three in number. Those are also degenerating. Synergid cells are also degenerating, right? We have studied, right, that this primary endosperm cell is going to give rise to a triploid tissue that is endosperm. So, what is the scenario? The scenario is that this entire structure will be converted into a mass of tissue. Right? I am not drawing it, but over here there will be a mass of tissue which is endosperm. So, there is endosperm present over here. Where is zygote present towards the micropyle end? Now, one thing you have to remember, students, that zygote is present away from the endosperm which is formed. So, it has to reach towards the endosperm to obtain nutrition from the endosperm. This you will understand when you will study the embryo development, right? So, let me start with the embryo development, right? So we will now just draw zygote, right? So this is zygote. It is a diploid cell, right? What will this zygote undergo, right? Let me write the ends, right? This end is micropyle end. This end is chalazal end. This zygote will undergo one transverse mitosis mitotic division right so from a single cell two cells are formed by one transverse mitosis so now there will be formation of two cells right the cell which is present towards the micropyle end is called as the basal cell Remember students, the terminology that is basal cell and terminal cell is given with respect to their position at micropyle and at chalazal end. It is not that it is an upper cell or lower cell. In case of an anatropous ovule, this is an anatropous embryo cell. So, the micropyle is towards the lower end, right? So, the basal cell is a lower cell and the terminal cell which is present towards the Chalazal end. This cell is called as terminal cell. So upper cell is terminal cell, lower cell is basal cell. But we cannot say it in the same way in case of orthotropous ovule. In case of orthotropous ovule, it will be reverse. It will be basal cell will be the upper cell, terminal cell will be the lower cell. So actually, what should be the criteria? The criteria should be the end. Micropyle end, the cell towards the micropyle end is basal cell. And the cell towards the chalazal end is terminal cell. Now, what happens? This basal cell undergoes transverse mitotic divisions. 
right? So this basal cell will undergo transverse mitotic division to form number of cells. Right? And the terminal cell will be a round cell. Let me draw it a little small. So this cells are called as suspensor and this cell is hostorial cell. Suspensor and hostorial cell. If we will draw the same diagram here, what happens? Let me remove this. So what happens? The lower cell is the basal cell which has undergone mitotic divisions to form suspensor and this is the terminal cell right so this is the suspensor part right and here is the terminal cell right so let me first uh, explain you what happens with terminal cell this terminal cell undergoes mitotic division but not a transverse one. It undergoes mitosis to form a mass, surrounded mass, right? So four cells are formed by two mitotic divisions. So there will be formation of four cells. This cell is called as pro-embryo. And because four cells are there, it is called as pro-embryo quadrant. Right? So over here, there will be formation of pro-embryo quadrant. So students, I want to explain you that what is the function of suspensor. Because of formation of the suspensor, this pro-embryo quadrant pushed towards the endosperm. So over here there is a mass of endosperm right and what is the function of suspensor? The function of suspensor right function of suspensor is to push the developing embryo towards endosperm. Why? For nutrition it is pushing it for nutrition right now what happens right again right this cell which of the cell of suspensor which is in contact with pro embryo quadrant becomes bigger in size and that cell is called as the hypophysis so the cell which is in contact with pro embryo quadrant is called as hypophysis and this pro embryo quadrant again undergoes one more mitotic division so from four cells how many cells are formed eight cells are formed right so again i am drawing it there is formation of eight cells this is called as pro embryo Often. The cell of suspensor which is in contact with this octant, this cell is called as hypophysis, right? And again we will draw these are the cells of suspensor and this is the Ostorial cell, right? This embryo is called as globular embryo, right? Now this globular em embryo, in this embryo, so this pro-embryo octant, right? The mass pro-embryo octant undergoes a periclinical division. Periclinical division is a peripheral division, right? So, again, 8 cells are there and when it undergoes one mitotic division, 16 cells will be formed, right? So, these are the cells, 
right? And it undergoes a peripheral division, right? So this is a peripheral division, right? So in periphery there are eight cells, and in the center portion there will be eight cells, right? The hypophysis undergoes three mitotic divisions to form eight cells, right? So hypophysis undergoes three mitotic divisions to form eight cells, right? And again the suspensor and the hostorial cells are as it is, right? So this division is called as periclinical division, periclinical division. And this is hypophysis. Which has undergone eight mitotic division. This is suspension and that is ostorial cell. So, students, if we we'll quickly revise the development of the dicot embryo, we are studying how a dicot embryo is developed, right? So, this is this was the diagram of a fertilized embryo. We know that the uh, antipodal cells are degenerating, the synergid cells are also degenerating. Endosperm is already formed, which is a nutritive tissue, and the zygote is left, right? Now, this zygote is now going to develop into the embryo after there is formation of endo. So, this is a single cell zygote. Zygote is a diploid cell, right? This undergoes one transverse division to form two cells. The one cell is basal cell and another cell is terminal cell. The basal cell is always towards the micropylon and the terminal cell is always towards the chalazal end. So, in case of anatropous ovule, the basal cell is a lower cell and the terminal cell is the upper uh, cell. It would reverse in case of orthotropous ovule because the micropylon chalazite itself will reverse, right? Now, what is the fate of the cells? Basal cell undergoes transverse mitotic divisions to form a stock of tissue. That tissue is called a suspensor and the last cell of the suspensor is a bulged cell which is hostorial cell. What is the function of the suspensor? It pushes the embryo towards the endosperm for the nutrition, right? So, because of this suspensor, this is the main embryo mass, the red one, right? So, it is pushing the embryo towards the endosperm. Over here will be endosperm for getting nutrition. So, the suspensor is a stalk which is pushing the embryo, right? What is the fate of terminal cell? Terminal cell undergoes two mitotic divisions to form four cells, right? That four cells are in a form of mass, right? It is a globular mass, right? That is called as pro-embryo quadrant, right? This pro-embryo quadrant undergoes one more mitotic division to form eight cells that is called as pro-embryo octant, right? The cell of the suspensor which is in contact with this pro-embryo octant is now called as hypophysis. It is so called because it is going to further undergo mitotic divisions and the fate of the cells are different, right? The rest is same, suspensor and hostorial cell, right? This pro-embryo often undergoes periclinical division, right? So, it undergoes periclinical division to form 16 cells. Hypophysis, the single cell, undergoes three mitotic divisions to form eight cells and the rest is same. This structure of the embryo, the main embryo, we are not talking of suspensor. The main embryo is this embryo. It is a globular shape, right? And hence, this embryo is called as globular embryo students, right? So, whenever there is development of a dicot embryo, this dicot embryo undergoes different shapes, undergoes transition. It it adapts different shapes and finally it is developed into a mature embryo. So, we have studied up to the development of globular embryo. The next embryo will be the heart shaped embryo. Right? So, now what happens? Right? Heart shaped from globular embryo, a heart shaped embryo is formed.
Right. So again, first let's draw a, again a globular embryo. This is the embryo with 16 cells because there is periclinical division. Right. This is hypophysis.
right? This part is hypocotyl and this part is going to give rise to root cortex and root cap and tip, right? So this is the structure of a matured embryo, right? Where these two cotyledons are emerging outside to be like this, right? So this is the structure of a mature embryo. We are studying a structure of dicot embryo. Yes, students. So while the embryo is developing, it is undergoing transitions in its shape. First, a globular embryo is formed. Then, a heart-shaped embryo is formed. Right? So globular embryo, then a heart shaped embryo and then finally a matured embryo is formed. Yes students, so in our next topic we are going to study about the structure of a monopod embryo. Right, so students till date we have studied about the structure of a dicot embryo. We have studied about the development of a dicot embryo. So we know now that first there is syngamy, then there is triple fusion, then there is embryo formation and then there is development of embryo. We have studied the development of a dicot embryo and different stages through which the embryo passes during its development, right? So from a single cell, diploid cell, zygote, an entire dicot embryo is formed and there is transition in its shapes, right? First it is a globular embryo, then it becomes a heart shaped embryo and then it becomes a matured embryo and it is a dicot embryo because it possesses two cotyledons. We have studied the structure of a seed also. In the center there is embryonal axis surrounded by the two cotyledons. The structure which is above the cotyledon is epicotyl. The structure which is below is called as hypocotyl. Right? We have to study the structure of a monocot embryo students. Right? So Monocot, the word itself says that the embryo possesses a single cotyledon. Right? So in your book, the diagram is given of the embryo of a grass. Right? But let's first quickly study that what is the structure of the embryo. So the embryo possesses a single cotyledon. So there is presence of one cotyledon. Right? So this is one cotyledon and this is the embryonal axis. Right? The upper part of the embryonal axis is called as epicotyl and it is covered by a sheath. That sheath is called as coleoptyle. So these are the new words which you are going to study in case of monocot embryo. What is coleoptyle? The sheath which is covering the plumule shoot apex is called as coleoptyle. And at the lower end also there is a thin sheath. That sheath is called as coleoriza. What is coleoriza? It is a sheath that is covering the radical and the root cap. That is called as coleoriza. Right? One more term you are going to study. That term is scutellum. Right? See, students, what is the function of uh, cotyledon? The function of cotyledon is to reserve the food for the embryo so that when the embryo is going to germinate, when the seed is going to germinate, that reserved food is going to help the seed, the embryo for germination. In case of monocot embryos, the cotyledon is a thin papery like and that cotyledon in case of the embryo of grass is called as scutellum. So what is scutellum? The cotyledon of the embryo of grass is called as scutellum, right? So this is the cotyledon, it is thin and papery, it is called as scutellum. This is the embryonal axis. The upper part of the embryonal axis possesses shoot apex, that is plumule and it is covered by a thin papery sheath. That sheath is called as coleoptyle. Whereas at the lower end of the embryonal axis, 
there is radical and root cap so from that from the radical there is going to be emergence of the roots and from the shoot apex there is going to be the emergence of the stem both are covered by coverings right the covering of shoot apex is called as coleoptile and the covering of the root cap and radical is called as coleoriza right so this is the structure of embryo of grass this is the structure of a typical embryo of monocot consisting of a single cotyledon and embryonal axis coleoptile and coleoriza so you have studied about the terms coleoptile coleoriza and scutellum scutellum is nothing but the cotyledon of the embryo of grass let's study the structure of a monocot seed that is maize seed right so it possesses endosperm that is persistent endosperm this endosperm is making the major part of the seed and this endosperm is divided into two parts the outer layer is a proteinaceous layer that layer is called as aleuron layer and this aleuron layer is a proteinaceous layer and the inner part is made up of starch so it is starchy endosperm so endosperm is divided into two parts that is aleuron layer which is made up of protein and the inner part is starch and this part its lower part possesses embryo and as we know the structure of the embryo it consists of one cotyledon then embryonal axis its plumule and shoot apex is covered by coleoptile and its radical and root cap is covered by coleoriza right now the question is that why we are calling it as a cotyledon students as i already told you that cotyledon should possess a reserved food material but in this case the cotyledon is papery it doesn't possess reserved food material but what happens when this embryo the developed embryo wants to germinate then it requires the reserved food then from the endosperm the reserved food first enters into cotyledon so the cotyledon becomes foody right it it develops it in its side and then the food enters into the embryo that is why it is called as cotyledon otherwise the cotyledon of the monocot embryo is thin and papery in case of embryo of grass it is called as scutellum what is coleoptile it is a sheath which is covering plumule and shoot apex and what is coleoriza it is a sheath which is covering the radical and the root cap right in the next topic our next topic will be so we are on the edge of completion of this chapter our next topic will be about different types of seeds students hello students yeah so our next topic is seeds and fruits so students we have studied about the structure of a dicot embryo the structure of monocot embryo right so finally after fertilization which all the structures which will develop into which all the parts after reproduction right so ovary will develop into a fruit right ovary possesses ovule that ovule is going to develop into a seed right the ovule possesses integuments those integuments will form the seed coat right so seed is formed from ovule seed coats are formed from integuments the ovary itself forms the fruit so development of the seed from ovule and fruit from ovary occurs simultaneously right and the wall of the ovary will form the wall of the fruit which is called as pericarp right students talking about the seeds right seeds are classified into two types that is albuminous seeds or endospermic seeds and non albuminous seeds or non endospermic seeds the name itself says right so students in some seeds the endosperm which is the reserved food material is persistent right such seeds are called as albuminous seeds so there is persistent endosperm some a 
amount of endosperm is persistent. So albuminous seeds is seen in both dicot seeds as well as monocot seeds. So for example, wheat and maize are the monocot seeds which are albuminous seeds. Castor is a dicot seed which is also an albuminous seed. The second type of seed is non-albuminous seed or non-endospermic seed in which endosperm is completely used up. Example of non-endospermic seeds are peas, groundnut and sunflower seeds, right? So seeds are basically classified into two types, albuminous and non-albuminous. Albuminous seeds where there is persistent endosperm and non-albuminous where endosperm is completely utilized. Students, we have also studied about perispermic seeds, right? So we know that ovule possessed a mass of tissue called as nucellus, which is used up during the formation of embryo sac. If some amount of this nucellus is persistent, then such seed is called as perispermic seed. Perispermic seed is having a persistent nucellus. Example is wheat and black pepper, right? Talking about the fruits, the fruits are having different types of classifications, right? Whether the fruit is fleshy fruit, such as in case of guava, in case of mangoes, in case of oranges, or the fruit is completely dried up, right? Such as in case of the, sorry, groundnut, right? Example of dried seeds is, say, groundnut. It is a dry fruit, right? Fruits can also be classified as a true fruit and false fruit, right? The name itself says what is true fruits, right? So fruit, right? What we studied, fruit develops from ovary. So if a fruit develops from which part of the inflorescence from the ovary, such fruits are called as true fruits. The fruits which are developing from the ovary itself. Most of the fruits are true fruits. There are some of the fruits which are false fruits also, which means those fruits are formed not from the ovary, but from some other part, such as apple, strawberry, cashew. Say for example, apple, it is not developing, the fruit is not developing from ovary, but it is developing from the thalamus or the receptacle. So apart from ovary, if the fruit develops from some other part of the inflorescence, say thalamus in case of apple and strawberry, then such fruits are called as false fruits because they have not developed from ovary. True fruits are developed from ovary. Then there are aggregate fruits. So students, we have studied about monocarpillary, multicarpillary. So based on it also fruits can be divided. Simple fruits, the fruit which have developed from a single pistil. Aggregate fruits, right? So there are simple fruits, there are aggregate fruits, which means the fruit has developed from multiple pistils. So there are multiple pistils because of it. There are multiple ovaries and fruit is an aggregate fruit which is developed from a multiple pistils. Such fruit is called as aggregate fruit. So there is a single flower which is multicarpillary and from all the ovaries a fruit is developed which is an aggregate fruit. Right? Then students there is one more term that is parthenocarpic fruits. The name parthenocarpy, the word parthenocarpy itself means without fertilization. So if the fruits are developed without fertilization, right? So when there is fertilization, there is syngamy of male and female gametes. But if fruit is developed without fertilization, right? Which means would there be seeds? If fertilization happens, then only the ovule gets converted into the seed. So, parthenocarpic fruits are the fruits which have developed without fertilization. Those fruits are seedless fruits. 
एग्जाम्पल ऑफ पार्थिनो कार्पिक फ्रूट इज बनाना बनानाज आर पार्थिनो कार्पिक फ्रूट देन देर आर सम ऑफ दी थिंग्स विच यू हैव टू रिमेंबर राइट सो वॉट इज डॉर्मेंसी ऑफ द सीड राइट सो स्टूडेंट वी हैड स्टडीड द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ अ डाइपॉट सीड ऑल्सो वी नो दैट दैट सीड पजेज इज एन ओपनिंग कॉल्ड एज माइक्रो पाइप राइट सो सीड द टू कॉट्स ऑफ द सीड आर द टू कॉटेलिडेंस दोज आर कवर्ड बाई सीड पोर्ट्स इट विल ओपन इट देन देर इज एन ओपनिंग इन साइड right that opening is micropyle right what is that required why is micropyle opening required in the seed so that air can enter into the seed right seeds have a particular dormancy period right so seeds will lose some amount of water and when the condition is favorable the seed is going to germinate but students if the condition is not favorable then the seeds will remain in a period of dormancy where they are not going to germinate after that dormancy period is over the seeds are going to germinate right so lupine seeds right obtained from the artica right had the dormancy period of around 10000 years then recently 2000 years old viable seed of date palm was recovered right 2000 years old but the seed was viable which means it was in a dormancy period right it was recovered so that is about the seeds and fruits seeds are classified into albuminous non albuminous fruits can be fleshy and dry fruits can be simple aggregate and composite fruits can be true fruits and false fruits fruits can be parthenocarpic fruits there are perispermic seeds also which are having persistent new cells right okay now there are two topics which are left students that is about the emasculation and bagging that is called as artificial hybridization what is it we will start it hello students right so our next topic of this chapter that is sexual reproduction in flowering plants is apomixis and poly embryony right students so what is apomixis what is apomixis what is the definition of it it is asexual reproduction in plants in which seeds are formed without fertilization it is a kind of asexual reproduction in plants right so what is asexual reproduction that you will study in your first chapter right of this 12th standard itself right that is asexual reproduction is a means where there is no fertilization there is no meiotic division there is no recombination only through mitotic divisions there will be production of the new offspring right so what is apomixis asexual reproduction in plants in which the seeds are formed without fertilization is called as apomixis where in which plants you can see so plants of the grasses and asteraceae family can be observed apomixis apomixis can be observed in the grasses and asteraceae family right so this asexual reproduction in plants in which seeds are produced without fertilization so what we have studied when there is fertilization when there is fusion of male and female gamete that is syngamy followed by triple fusion then only there will be development of embryo and the ovule will form into a seed but in this case right ovule is going to develop into a seed without fertilization that is called as 
epo mixes and how is this epo mixing epo mixes functioning by the mode of a gamma spermy what is a gamma spermy students right so unfertilized ovules right formation of the seeds embryos in an unfertilized ovule formation of embryo in unfertilized ovule is called as a gamospermy so if we if we if we'll quickly recollect the structure of the ovule then we know that a typical anatropous ovule consists of integuments so this are the integuments the cells are diploid cells and inside there is the mass of the cells those mass of the cells is called as new cells all of the cells are diploid cells so this are the cells of new cells and this are the cells of integuments all the cells are diploid cells right so and from this any one of the cell any one of the cell is going to function as a megaspore mother cell and from that an embryo sac is going to be formed right now what is a gamospermy formation of embryo in an unfertilized ovule so this is ovule there are cells of new cells there are cells of integument might be there will be formation of megaspore mother cell but without fertilization when in this unfertilized ovule an embryo are formed a single embryo or multiple embryo that is called as a gamospermy so epomixis occurs by means of a gamospermy so formation of the seeds without fertilization that is apomixis and that occurs by means of a gamospermy now there are three types of a gamospermy which are those three types of a gamospermy the first one is adventive polyembryonic second is recurrent a gamospermy and the third is non recurrent a gamospermy so these are the three types of a gamospermy adventive polyembryony recurrent a gamospermy and non recurrent a gamma spermy yes students so apomixis is asexual reproduction seen in the plants where unfertilization without fertilization there is production of seeds and we know seeds are produced from ovules right so formation of the embryos in an unfertilized ovule is called as a gamospermy so apomixis occurs by means of a gamospermy where is apomixis seen in the plants of grasses and asteraceae family right a gamospermy is divided into three types that is adventive recurrent and non recurrent here the word polyembryony is used which means poly is multiple embryony means embryos which means that multiple embryos are formed students if you have seen many of the citrus fruits such as lemon mangoes oranges all of all of this are citrus fruits if you will squeeze the seeds of oranges then you will see multiple embryos in the seeds of oranges that is called as polyembryon so what is polyembryony right so what happens when cells 
of nucellus right so which is nucellus nucellus is a mass of diploid tissue when some of the cells of nucellus will start forming embryo right so a diploid cell of nucellus it will form an embryo entire embryo one more diploid cell of nucellus form an entire embryo so when many such cells of nucellus forms many embryos it is polyembryony that is called as adventive polyembryony or when the cells of integuments form embryos right so we know students that is and that in angiosperms angiosperms are bitegmic and gymnosperms are unitegmic which means two integuments are present in angiosperms and single integument is present in gymnosperm so the cells of this integuments are again diploid cells so when any of the cells of this integument start developing into the embryos right then multiple embryos are formed from the cells of integument without fertilization so formation of embryos from an unfertilized ovum right that is called as adventive polyembryony here we are using the term polyembryony means multiple embryos are formed either from the cells of new cells or from the cells of integuments example is all the citrus fruits that is lemon mangoes and oranges second type of agamospermy is recurrent agamospermy in which embryo is formed for, from a diploid megaspore mother cell right that is mmc megaspore mother cell so students we know this megaspore mother cell is diploid this megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis to form four megaspores out of this four megaspores three are going to degenerate and only one megaspore is going to form an embryo sac this is a normal event in case of sexual reproduction but here there is asexual reproduction so one megaspore mother cell which is formed from a cell of new cells this cell itself is going to divide and form an entire embryo without meiosis there will be only mitotic divisions such kind of formation of embryo from megaspore mother cell so the ovule is an fertilized ovule is called as recurrent a gamospermy and the third type is non recurrent agamospermy what is it students so in it there is formation of embryo right formation of embryo from unfertilized egg right so in this case megaspore mother cell has undergone meiosis megaspore is formed from any one there is an formation of embryo sac also an embryo sac possesses an egg cell that is a female gamete which is haploid so this egg cell is haploid if from this single haploid egg cell the entire embryo is formed without fertilization by the male gamete then the embryo will also be haploid and the organism that is plant plant body will also be haploid this process that is formation of the embryo from an unfertilized egg is called as parthenogenesis remember you have studied about the parthenon carpic fruits also what are those fruits those fruits are again seedless 
fruits which are formed without fertilization similarly when embryos are formed without fertilization that is when the embryos are formed from a haploid unfertilized egg without fertilization so the embryo will also be haploid and the entire plant body will also be haploid that is called as non recurrent agamospermy so there are three types adventive polyembryony where multiple embryos are formed in case of citrus fruits either from the cells of nucellus or from the cells of integument and all the embryos are diploid embryos recurrent agamospermy where embryo is formed from megaspore mother cell hence the embryo will be diploid embryo and non recurrent agamospermy where embryo is formed from an unfertilized egg so the embryo will be haploid and the plant body will also be haploid right this agamospermy is a means of apomixis what is apomixis asexual reproduction in the plants where seeds are produced from the ovules from unfertilized ovules without fertilization yes students so only one topic is left in this chapter that is about the artificial hybridization you will study about this in detail in your plant breeding program in chapter 9 but we will take a look about the techniques of artificial hybridization that is emasculation and bagging techniques Uh, next and the last topic of this chapter is artificial hybridization artificial hybridization is a crop improvement program right it is a crop improvement program right so so that you will get a good quality of crops right it is a plant breeding program to improve the quality of the crops right the two techniques which are involved in this artificial hybridization are emasculation and the second technique is bagging right so emasculation and bagging are the two techniques which are involved in this artificial hybridization program right so what is the concept behind it students right so say this is one flower right and this flower is good right which means its qualities are good its uh, uh, say its ornamental properties are good right so and there is another flower which is resistant say for example it is having good power of disease resistance so i want to combine the characteristics of both the flowers which means the flower should be good ornamentally also good beautiful look wise as well as the flower should be disease resistant also right so i want to combine both these properties right so that is hybridization but that is done artificially that is why it is artificial hybridization so say the flower which is ornamental good right i am taking the pollen grains of that flower right so i am taking the four pollen grains of that flower and i am mixing with the stigma of the another flower which is having good resi disease resistance but we know students that pollination is done by various biotic and abiotic components so what happens if this stigma of if the stigma of this flower which is disease resistant will receive the pollen grains from some other flowers those are unwanted pollen grains then that is called as contamination which means our desired pollen grains from the desired flower will not be able to germinate on the stigma of another desired flower right that is why this crop breeding program is done that is artificial hybridization how is it done right so it consists of two techniques that is emasculation and bagging technique are you getting it this is one flower this is resistance this is another flower which is having ornamental properties 
if the pollen grains of this flower are going to come on the stigma of this flower then there will be combination of both the properties but if this flower the stigma will receive the unwanted pollen grains from some other flower then we will not get our desired combinations that is why this artificial hybridization is done what is emasculation right so if a flower is a bisexual flower right say the flower is a bisexual flower which means the flower possesses the ovary stigma and style also as well as the ovaries possesses anthers also right so what is emasculation that is removal of anthers before it matures and is ready for dehiscence using or sets so as and when this anthers are on the urge of getting mature right so it is near to getting mature what we are doing we are cutting down this anthers using the forceps or scissors right so what we are doing we are cutting the anthers using the forceps before it is matured right just before it is matured and it is ready for dehiscence that is release of pollen grains we are removing those anthers our desired anthers which possesses desired pollen grains that process is called as emasculation right so so this is one flower and say this is another flower which is having the stigma style and ovary right so what we are doing right this stigma is not receptive right now so we are covering the stigma with a paper might be a butter paper yeah right which is which is commonly used and which is preferred right covering of the stigma stigma before it is receptive with a butter paper right that technique is called as bagging technique so what we are doing we are covering this entire stigma part with a butter paper so what is the first step we are cutting down the anthers the required anthers right the anthers of our choice which possesses desired pollen grains by the forceps right that is called as emasculation right once this anthers will dehisce we will collect all the desired pollen grains from the anthers right we does not want that this desired anthers go to the undesired stigma that is why we are collecting it what is the next step we are covering we are covering the desired stigma with a bag so that this stigma will not get contaminated from some unwanted pollen grains that is we are using butter paper we are bagging it right that is called as bagging technique once the stigma becomes receptive right what we are going to do and once the anther matures we have collected the pollen grains so say these are the desired pollen grains right from this anther right once this stigma becomes receptive we don't want unwanted contamination that is why we have bagged it we have covered it right now what we will do we will remove the bag we will sprinkle the desired pollen grains on the stigma and again we will do rebagging right so first emasculation is done second bagging is done third is we are going to sprinkle desired pollen grains 
वंस स्टिग्मा ऑफ बैग फ्लावर बिकम्स रिसेप्टिव सो वन स्टिग्मा बिकम्स रिसेप्टिव वी आर स्प्रिंकलिंग द डिजायर्ड पोलर ग्रेन्स एंड देन अगेन वॉट वी आर डूइंग वी आर अगेन रीबैगिंग which means we are again now covering this flower with the bag so that other unwanted pollen grains will not come on the stigma right finally what will happen there will be fertilization and we will get the desired seeds this process is called as artificial hybridization right this emasculation technique is required if the flowers are bisexual flowers if the flowers are unisexual flowers then there is no need right so it consists of two techniques emasculation and bagging what is emasculation removal of the anthers before it becomes mature and it is ready to dehyze right by using the forceps is called as emasculation and what is bagging covering of the stigma before it is receptive right so we are covering our desired stigma before it becomes mature and receptive to with a butter paper right so that we will prevent contamination by unwanted pollen grains that is bagging then we are going to sprinkle the desired pollen grains on this stigma and again we are going to cover it that process is re bagging right so this is about artificial hybridization